Hello, my lovely watchers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and welcome to another night of the Royal Romance Book One. Tonight we're going to be playing Chapter 15, maybe also Chapter 16, if, um, if time permits. If you haven't joined us before, uh, welcome! I drink and I cuss. If you want to follow along and drink along with me, the drinking rules are right underneath the player here on twitch.tv slash aromanticace. I myself have an inebriating beverage of which I'll be partaking because tomorrow night I can't drink but I have family coming into town. So, yeah, I'm getting my drinking done now. Um, let's see. So, to, uh, to catch anyone up who has never joined us before, we are playing as Kira, a New York City waitress who was trafficked to the, the fictional Western European country of Cordonia. Um, we met a prince at his bachelor party, we kidnapped him and took him to the Statue of Liberty, and then one of his friends decided that, wow, that means that you should be the ruler of our country. So we're now embroiled in a, a, a bachelor-style competition for, for the prince's hand, and also a position as one of the ruling monarchs of the country. And instead of going from waitress to instant princess, turns out we're going to be going from waitress to instant queen because the king is abdicating. So, we may or may not be stringing along a couple of other potential romantic love interests. I may or may not have ranted about harmful tropes that really no responsible romance writer ever uses anymore. Um, but immediately preceding this, we had a... Yeah, instant queen, just add water, exactly. Um, but just preceding this, we, we survived, and it's quite literally survived, a, a country garden party um, after which we were assaulted, and nobody is actually treating this as an assault in the game, which is great. Um, but now we are on our way back to the Beaumont estate, the Beaumonts being our sponsors, to throw the, the last big party of the social season the Beaumont Bash. So, let's see if we can get ourselves in some kind of trouble there. And let me see if I can get any audio from the game over to y'all tonight, because my speakers died. So, let's find out! Oh, yes I did! Okay, calm, calm that shit down. All right. Eh. What did I do? I have no idea. Stop it. Okay, hang on. Sorry about that. Do do do. It's not you. It's me. This again. Are you gonna give me volume at all now? Okay, well, alright. Cool. I'm not gonna keep fighting with it. Alright, so we have chapter 15, The Brothers Beaumont. Oh sure, now it plays music. Hopefully that's not obnoxiously loud. Okay. Having departed from Applewood Manor, you, Maxwell, and Bertrand ride in a limo toward the Beaumont estate. Maxwell says, I, for one, thought Kira's performance at the Applewood events was spectacular. Hmm. <laughs> she did fine. Oh, thanks, Bertrand. Thanks! We're apparently going to take that as a genuine compliment, which I doubt it was. Hey, did I miss anything at the country jamboree while I was with Shamar? There was a lot going on. Yeah, like us being assaulted. Yeah, that was going on. Uh-huh. Eh, not really. It was par for the course. Lots of gossiping, lots of mingling, someone got hit with a rocket during the badminton tournament. You know, the usual. Um, Maxwell? Honey, did you hit someone with a rocket during the tournament? I think you did. <gasps> Is that the usual? 
Have you ever been to a party, Kira? Oh, the real big news was that a reporter managed to sneak onto a state grounds. You hardly ever get someone who can do that. Gee, a reporter snuck onto state grounds on the same day that we were assaulted in our room, which had no lock on the door. Wow, I wonder if those two events could be connected. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Yes, but she was quickly caught and ejected. She should have known better than to come to a private event. Honestly. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're, you're not just mentioning this. This is a Chekhov's gun, y'all. We're not stupid. Now, enough reminiscing. I cannot stress enough the importance of our upcoming fete. Oh my god, you would use the word fete. Good lord. The Beaumont Bash is the final event before the coronation, and expectations couldn't be higher. Oh, I, I really feel like they could. I mean, can't think of any way right now, but I feel like they could. Which means we have to throw the best party! Well, Maxwell's got his priorities. The very reputation of House Beaumont is on the line. <sighs> And remember, just like Olivia had the advantage when she hosted the royal court, now we'll have the upper hand. Haha, <laughs> do we get to sit her at the back with the cold lobster bisque? Are you prepared, Kira? Um, define prepared. Honestly, so we can say, I won't let us down, I just want to party, or I want to get back at Olivia. It's not really judgy, it's just true, I guess. But, um, I mean, like, I do want to get back with Olivia, but that's not what I'm going to say. Um, honestly, this is kind of weirdly phrased, but I won't let us down. I suppose that cliched assertion is the only thing I can rely on. Oh, fuck you, Bertrand. Told you I cuss. Suddenly, Maxwell slides across the limo seat to look out the window. Hey, we're home! We've never visited our sponsor's home, by the way. We've always been at the Royal Palace or somewhere that was not the Beaumont Estate, which is interesting. Gazing out, you see rolling vineyards all the way up to the edge of a large manor. The limo glides to a stop and you hop out. Wow. This is some fine real estate. It's beautiful in all its splendor. I'm so proud of himself. Look at him. It's a, it's a very nice, very nice patio furniture they got there. Maxwell plops down onto the couch. Ah, the cushion still remembers my shape. That... That sounds weird, Maxwell. It's cozy, but it also feels empty for a noble's estate. Shouldn't there be, you know, people? Uh, to cut costs, the house staff isn't scheduled until tomorrow, but the caterers and cleaning crew from the event planning company should have been here by now. Hmm, should they, Bertrand? Should they have been here? Hmm, I am suspicious. It's a big place. You gotta shout to reach him. Do we? Hello! We're home! <laughs> you hear no response. Excellent. The house has devoured the entire staff Rose Red style. I mean, in the Fey realm, you know, you bring in these unsuspecting humans and they just wander away. It's very upsetting. Hmm... So we can either shout as well, hello, or maybe they're all pranking us. Uh, yeah, I doubt they're all pranking us. We're not that stupid. So let's just, yeah, hello. Future queen of Cordonia here. I'll make all of your dreams come true. I mean, <laughs> maybe a little presumptuous of us, but I, I like the, I like the confidence there. Your call em echoes through the empty halls. Something isn't right. Oh, really, Bertrand? You're just now catching on. Bertrand looks around the house. He finds a note above the fireplace. Opening it, he reads it. He reads it while he's opening it? <gasps> what? 
Yeah, no shit. Future queen here, move out of the way. <gasps> they backed out of the event. Gee, I wonder why that could have happened, Bertrand. Did your check bounce? Huh? Why would they do that? Maxwell, honey, you're not stupid. It appears there was a, <clears throat> uh, a paperwork issue. A logistical hiccup, it seems. And rather than wait for our arrival, they cancelled and left a note above the fireplace of all places, which is weird. This is going to be a disaster. Well, you know. <laughs> well, so we can say there's got to be something we can do. If anyone needs me, I'll be taking a bath. That's rude. Or we're doomed. Yeah, the logistical hiccup of a bounced check. Yeah. I mean, Maxwell, yeah, you're right. Maxwell is kind of stupid, but like, yeah, I, I still feel like he should have caught on to that. Uh, nothing here is really helpful except to say there's got to be something we can do. This isn't the first time the crew we hired hasn't shown up. Well, I mean, that's a damn fact. Ugh, don't remind me. So yeah, we had to sail our own yacht in a regatta um, because his crew that he hired wanted to be paid. You know, this thing that people want in exchange for services in a capitalist society, money, um, they weren't going to get. So, <laughs> to be fair, we're being trafficked. It isn't our job to solve this problem, so I say go take a bath. No, we're trying to teach Kira to be a good person. Come on. Okay. Bertrand over here having his hissy fit. I'm just saying we can pull through if we work together. I mean, sure. Okay. I suppose you're right. There's no alternative except to cover for this mess before the entire royal court arrives tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh, we're, we're getting snappy with the music now, huh? Okay. Maxwell, call in every last favor you can. We need extra hands to clean the estate. I'll see what I can do about getting the flowers and furnishings for the ballroom. Okay. Okay. This is gonna be fun. Right! We're putting we're putting that Cinderella identity to good use here. A Lady Kira. Yes. The kitchen should be fully stocked. We're going to be feeding a lot of mouths tomorrow, so anything you can prepare in advance will be valuable. Okay. Um Yeah, pretty much 80s montage. Yeah, that's about that's what's about to go down here. It's going to be great. Uh, Maxwell will help you when he can. Will he, though? Team break! You're too excited about this, Maxwell. I need you to I need you to just calm down, my dude. Down in the kitchen, you check the pantries to take stock of what you have to cook with. Um, I can make y'all, like, almond butter on crackers. Caviar, squid ink, truffles. Where's the normal food? Yeah, I'd be screwed. Maxwell saunters into the room. Calls have been made, so now I can concentrate on food. Any culinary ideas? Nope. Not even a little. All of this stuff looks fancy, and I have no idea what to do with any of it. I'm a waitress, not a chef. The fancier the stuff, the less you have to do. Just dump it on a plate and call it deconstructed. <laughs> Order a pizza. Oh my god, this, this is turning into chopped um, royal court edition. Oh lord. I'm a... <clears throat> I, I have here uh, a... I don't remember how they describe a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but something on artisanal bread. Like, fruit com it's like, sugary fruit compote with, like, I don't remember what they called peanut butter, but it was fucking hilarious. Okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we're doing now, is, um, <laughs> we're gonna be the worst contestants ever on Chopped. Okay. <coughs> cool. Oh my gosh, so we can say you're a genius or that's a terrible idea. It's really the only option we have. You're a genius. What else are we gonna do? Order a pizza? Uh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad someone recognizes my brilliance. Okay, Maxwell. Pureed nut spread with a grape compote and artisanal bread. Yes, thank you. That's, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Deconstructed though, so, yeah, which just means it's open-faced. <laughs> I'll grab the caviar and some other stuff to go with it. You get some fancy serving spoons. Uh, how? Okay. 
sure. As you search the kitchen, you call over your shoulder. I'm sorry the helpers bailed. I can't believe this happened again. Can't we, though? Yeah, me neither. Bertrand told me he had everything covered and not to ask any questions. Yeah, well... <laughs> but... Yeah, I... I, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't know. Like, he just says fancy serving spoons, so maybe they've got those little, like, um, like ceramic ladles that I've seen people use for just, like, random stuff. Maybe maybe we've got some of those. Like, I, I wouldn't know. Maxwell would have to tell me. Maxwell, what the fuck spoons do you want? Because you got, like, 15 different kind of, kind of spoons in here, and I got no idea. But yeah, see, when someone tells you that they've got everything covered and not to ask any questions, that doesn't usually bode well. I'm just saying. But I'm sure this is somehow my fault. I don't know. Is it, Maxwell? Is it? Hmm? They're made of the bones of Bertrand's victims, probably. Maxwell, so we can say you shouldn't take the blame for everything, or why does Bertrand talk to you like that? Wow, that's a little bit judgy. Take a drink. Because, like, honestly, I think we do know why Bertrand talks to him like that. But, you know, only if his victims are whales. <laughs> I mean, there's, we, it's possible. There, pretty much anything is possible in, in these books. Maxwell, we can say you should, you shouldn't take the blame for everything. Just stop it. Bertrand is at least as much to blame, if not more so, than you. Especially since he's the one who said, Oh, I've got it. Oh, it'll be fine. No, then it really, it's hard to be Maxwell's fault. He knows that. He's even harder on himself. Uh, that's not an excuse for him to berate you. Stand up to him. Oh my god, we really are the American stereotype here. Just going around inciting revolutions in, like, every family. Wait until they start calling Bertrand the Cordonian Ed Gain. Oh, uh, he's a, he's something anyway. But yeah, like first first we're telling Hannah to stand up to her parents. Then now we're telling Maxwell to stand up to his brother. Are we seriously going to tell Shamar to stand up to Cordonia next? Is that what's coming? Because, goddamn, like we're troublemakers. This is awesome. It's not that simple, isn't it though? Look, I appreciate your concern over my relationship with Bertrand, but it's nothing I can't handle. You sure? I'm here if you ever need to talk. I mean, you basically are my brother now, so eh. Thanks, but we should focus on these appetizers. Oh, look, Maxwell dodging the emotional moments. We've got a party to prepare. Uh-huh. Yeah, don't think I don't see what you're doing, my boy. Because I do. Maxwell sets out the plates and the ingredients, which hopefully are not metal spoons to use with caviar. Here, put a little caviar on the spoon, then a little sprig of garnish, and finish with a dash of paprika. I, I am so sorry to anyone who might know whether or not paprika is good with caviar, because I have no idea. So, yeah, exactly. No time for emotion, must party! Yeah, that's, that's Maxwell. Uh, does paprika go well with caviar? I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. It'll be a novelty. Well, then here's to culinary experimentation. Or we could just Google it. <laughs> what do you... I don't know why you would have paprika with caviar, because Maxwell's insane, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I said I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you and Maxwell work for a few seconds in silence, assembling the appetizers. Hey, by the way, where are these friends you called? Yeah, indeed, where are they? Oh, you know, all of them said they were busy, or they couldn't make it, or that something came up. Did you call Hannah? Because Hannah would be here fixing all your fucking mistakes with the caviar, I'm pretty sure. Caviar just tastes super, super salty, really. Adding earthiness to super salty would, like, make the salty worse. I mean, I, I wouldn't know what to do with it, so... Eh, eh. Maybe there's something else in the paprika jar that isn't paprika, and so he's been confused over what paprika tastes like for his whole life. I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't even get a hold of Tariq. 
Oh, oh, he couldn't even get a hold of Tariq. God, I wonder why. I wonder how thrilled we would have been if Tariq had shown up. <laughs> My friend Mr. Snugglesworth had a court date. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, oh, I couldn't even get a hold of Tariq. Not that he'd even know which end of a broom to hold. Uh, he knows the end of something to hold, which is part of the problem. But don't worry, we can do it together. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Aw. Aw. Maxwell. We can say this is just way, this is way too much work for just us, which is kind of negative and not helpful. Or teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, we'll, we'll go, we'll go with the Saturday, Saturday morning special there. Teamwork makes the dream work. Ooh, that could be our new house motto. Oh, okay. Sure. What is it now? Oh, what's your house motto right now? Uh, I think something about vendettas and giant squid. <laughs> okay, so House Beaumont is the Iron Islands now. Sure. Squid? Well, we used to be seafaring people. Okay, sure. Just then, you hear the door to the kitchen open. Please be Hannah, please be Hannah, please be Hannah. Fuck! Ah! Ah! No! Okay, as long as you keep your shirt on, Drake. Hello? Anyone in here? No, go away, we're closed. <gasps> Drake! I saw you shirtless less than 12 hours ago. Drake! 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 You came! <laughs> calm down, Maxwell. Yeah, yeah, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. Stop being me, Drake. This isn't okay. Stop it. Yes, it is! We are friends! Oh, no! Oh, no! Aw, oh, Drake just got mistaken for someone's friend! You promised me whiskey. Yeah, we figured you had a reason to show up. Friendship whiskey! <laughs> Maxwell's so positive. Drake! So we can say, you made it, or is whiskey all you care about? Yeah, stop making Ace empathize with you, Drake. Yeah, no shit. <sighs> Do we want to be a super jerk? Which, you know, that's judgy. Take a drink. Do we want to be a super jerk and say is whiskey all you care about? Because, like, we kind of know what Drake is liable to do. He's either going to get really pissy and defensive, or he's going to, like, kind of tuck his tail and be like, mm, I thought you knew, kind of thing. Ah... <sighs> I don't want to deal with it. Let's not. Drake, you made it! Yeah, yeah. Behold your knight in shining armor. Oh, fuck you. We all know that's what you were supposed to be last night, or in the last episode, with your fucking white knight bullshit. Ah, Go away. Alright, I'm here now. What needs to be done? You going away. Kira and I are plating some fancy appetizers. Come join us! Drake takes up a spot next to Maxwell and starts assembling. Pretty soon you have rows of paprika and caviar tasting spoons. Okay. Cool. Ooh, these are shaping up. I think we need a good name for these, though. Maybe Jewels of the Sea. Uh, no. Why not name it so we can call it the Bud of Paradise, the Charade of the Season, or Stuffy Rich Person Food? <laughs> and Kira, Kira dealing with Drake. Do you drink because you feel you can't express your emotions in a healthy way while maintaining your masculinity? Probably, because Drake has manthrax. So, yeah. Um... Let's, let's at least try to maintain some kind of appearances. Let's name it the Butt of Paradise. <laughs> I don't know. Ugh, I feel pretentious just hearing that name. Fuck you, Drake. That means it's perfect. I can already picture them complimenting the delicious Butt of Paradise. Okay, sure. <laughs> caviar and paprika, okay. As you use up the last of the caviar, Maxwell stores the appetizers in one of the huge fridges. There, that should be enough to get us started. Now then, on to the main course. Butt of Paradise does sound like something you could buy at a dispensary, and probably is something you could buy at a dispensary. I would, I would be shocked if it's not. 
Do you even know how to cook from scratch? Well, fuck you, Drake. Well... Maxwell's phone vibrates. <laughs> oh. oh, thank heavens. Bertrand found another company to handle the main courses. Let me tell you, nobody would have wanted the science experiment I was about to produce. I mean, that's probably true. We've, we've put paprika and caviar, y'all. Dodged a bullet there. So, what's next on the we're in panic mode list? Hmm. I should stay here and clean the kitchen, but Bertrand might need help in the main hall. Oh boy. Just who I want to help. Last I saw of him, he was looking for cleaning supplies. Oh no, in that sweater vest? Oh boy. I'll stay here and help Maxwell. We'll come find you once we finish down here. Oh, what's the matter, Drake? Is cleaning too girly for you? Fuck you. Just, just fuck you. You enter the main hall. At the base of the stairs, Bertrand obsessively scruffs, obsessively scrubs the tiles on his hands and knees. Oh, God. And he still hasn't taken off the damn jacket. He's all sad. Oh, poor guy. Uh, Bertrand? What? Uh, well... We can say I was sent here to help you, or I have never seen you do manual labor. Um, no, let's not, let's not be a jerk. I was sent here to help you. So, if you need anything, let me know. It's fine, I have it under control. I'm sure you do, Bertrand. You, like, you've got everything under control. Bertrand, we can say, let me help you. I'll leave you to it then, or you missed a spot. Yeah, let's seriously not be a jerk. Let's just say, let me help you. Because, like, why not? Uh, oh, like, look at his face when he's surprised. It's probably the worst one with, like, the size of his face not reflecting the size of his mouth. That's creepy. If you're going to insist, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Remember to get in between the tiles. You grab a brush and spray from a bucket of cleaning supplies and scrub the floor alongside Bertrand. We've probably done worse in restaurant work, so it's fine. After some time, Bertrand comes over to inspect your work. Not bad. I suppose I owe you my... <sighs> my thanks. Yeah, I suppose you do. Glad I could help. Now... We should find Maxwell before he's left unattended for too long. Yeah, you know. I mean, Drake's supposed to be taking care of him. Just then, Maxwell emerges from the kitchen. Whew! That was quite the ordeal. I hope it's at least a year before I ever have to clean another kitchen again. Luckily, with Drake, it went faster than I thought. Wait, Drake cleaned the kitchen? Seriously? Because I don't buy it. I don't buy it. No. Speak of the devil. I hope that was a reference to my impish charm. Oh, God. Oh, God. It wasn't. Wow, Bertrand Rude. A uh, man can dream. Uh, now that you're done with the kitchen, we need to do a thorough dusting. Just be careful with our displays. Your help was appreciated, Lady Kara, but I can finish the floors. Maxwell will need you more. This house needs to be in top condition before guests arrive. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. You and Maxwell walk around the room, dusting the walls, vases, busts, and paintings. Behind the stairwell, you come across several weapons on the wall. Ooh! Oh no, please don't let the American near your weapons. Oh my, touch one. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a dagger. Okay, I had a called, I guess that was like a gladiolus, but I guess it's a dagger. Um, a sword. A double sword. A flail. Or an axe. Uh, I'm gonna go with a double sword. Double sword's cool. Where do you usually see one of those? Like, nowhere, so... You touch the weapon, then draw your hand back. <gasps> wow, they're all so pointy. Wow, way to sound just like... God, so... So stupid, Kira. That's like... 
<laughs> we we'll have a chance to play with the weapons again at some point. I do know. So so yeah. They're all so pointy. Oh god. Okay. I see you found our wall of weapons. That I did. Buy battle axe. <laughs> I mean, you know, sure. But I mean, it was a double sword, so like, you know, two sides to that. Could be used from any angle. Why are these here? Uh, they're, these are a selection from our armory. They're very important to our family and Cordonia's history. Yeah? Were they used while you were a seafaring people? Uh, but the best thing about them is that they act as a variety of exciting bottle openers. Oh god, you use a flail as a bottle opener? <sighs> no. This, oh no. Like, an axe would be scary enough. A, 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 oh god. Oh god. Oh no. Bottle openers? We use them to kill the harvest sacrifice. Yeah, that would that would be a way more reasonable explanation. So, bottle openers, we can say that's totally normal, or what exactly is gonna happen at this party? <laughs> Open those bottles real good. Uh, no, that's not totally normal, Kara. That's not normal at all. What exactly is gonna happen at this party? Because it sounds like blood will be spilled. Yeah, if Maxwell's involved. Hey, nothing is more important than safety here at House Beaumont. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Is that why? Oh, God. Really? Well, having fun is first. Second is keeping Bertrand from getting mad. Ah, uh, there you go. There you go. Then probably something about dancing. But right after that, definitely safety. Yep, yep. That sounds a lot more realistic. Maxwell's phone vibrates. He checks it. Anyway, Bertrand just said he and Drake are working in the ballroom. We'd better go see if they need help. My god. Bertrand and Drake working alongside each other. You and Maxwell make your way to the ballroom where Drake and Bertrand are arranging centerpieces and setting the tables. Oh my. It's looking great! It looks like a... Like, uh, those chandeliers, I swear to god, I've seen in, like, cheap, uh, hotel ballrooms. I'm not even kidding. I have memories. Thank you, Maxwell. These tables are- th Thank you. Maxwell, these tables in the back corner are ready for napkins. Can you help? <laughs> Legends are told about the Beaumont Dancing Queen. Yeah, they will be by the end of tonight. Or tomorrow night, or whenever. On it! Lady Kira, if you could assist Drake, <laughs> must I? Sure! Oh god, okay. While Maxwell and Bertrand set the back tables, you find Drake arranging flowers in a vase. I have a feeling if I said vase, Bertrand would kill me. Why, Drake, I never knew you had such flair with peonies. Yeah, I'm taking a picture of that shit and putting it on the internet. Drake, your masculinity can just take the hit. The things I do for you people. Hey, shut the fuck up. As you pick up a vase, Drake steps close and lowers his voice. Hey, anything about this seem off to you? Is this our conspiratorial music? Because it does not fit. Huh? Drake nods toward the other side of the room. Leaning in, you hear Bertrand and Maxwell arguing in hushed tones. Well, that's pretty normal, actually. What I don't get is that the money was in our account yesterday. Whoa. I, I don't know anything about our finances, Bertrand. You know that. You might not know anything, but you're still causing me problems. You're the only other person with access to that account. Well, Occam's Razor does say... Do you see the funky robot dancing into the corner according to this music? Yeah, that's about what it sounds like. I... Yeah, Maxwell, if you're the only one with access... Or the only other one with access to the account, it's probably a pretty safe bet that you had something to do with this. We're gonna find out what... This had better not be to pay off one of your idiotic credit card purchases. 
Last month you said you spent 3,000 on a jet ski. What is it this time? Hmm, I wonder. I told you, I don't know what you're talking about. Do you? You're lucky I don't have time to deal with you right now. I don't think you ever have time to deal with him, and I think that's the problem, Bertrand. <laughs> Maxwell's all depressed. <sighs> okay. As Bertrand and Maxwell stalk off to get more napkins, Drake raises an eyebrow at you. Well, doesn't it seem like something weird is going on? It, sa it seemed like, so we can say Bertrand being Bertrand, which is true, uh, there's something suspicious going on in House Beaumont, or maybe Maxwell bought me a present? Why, why would we think that? Why? There's no reason that we'd think that. Oh no, it Oh, no, we, yeah, the prize-winning racehorse we would have paid for from our own funds. We never spend House Beaumont's money. So, yeah, it it would not have been that. Um, But, I mean, you know, Maxwell denying that he had anything to do with it when he's the only other person who can access the account does sound suspicious. We're going to say there's something suspicious going on in House Beaumont. Exactly. I wonder what's actually going on with their money issues. I'm going to find out what it is. Okay, Drake, you do that. You you don't have to worry about nabbing a prince. Besides, it sounds like Maxwell might be in over his head this time. I think he really needs my help. <laughs> something is rotten. Something's rotten in the state of Cordonia. Don't you mean something is rotten in the core of Cordonia? But knowing him, he'd never ask. I mean, that's probably true. I didn't realize you and Maxwell were that close. Yeah, Drake, didn't you say that none of the nobility were your friends? After all the time I've spent with him in the past weeks, I'm starting to find him less annoying. Okay, sure. High praise. Besides, we scrubbed the kitchen cabinets together. I think I'm invested now. <laughs> Reese's boyfriend sighed very heavily at that apple joke. Yes, don't think I can't hear you from all these miles away, Reese's boyfriend, because I can. I can hear you in my mind. Sure. Actually, Drake, there's something we else we should talk about. Oh, no. Oh, Oh no, oh, 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 but we're not going to do it about, so it's about last night, but we're not going to do it right. This is going to be all about Drake and not about what we went through, which is far more important. <gasps> uh, last night? Yes, right here in front of Bertrand and Maxwell. Well, they're stalking off to get napkins. I guess we're alone in the room. Uh, what you said about how you feel. No, 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 no. Drake's feelings literally do not matter right now. They do not matter. What matters is that some guy came into our room thinking it was his, grabbed us, even though we very clearly were not into it. Um, no, that's what matters. I don't care what Drake did or did not say or danced around saying because, you know, oh, hell, don't make me say it. No, 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 no. No, you don't use this type of thing to develop a male character. Like, God. Okay, I guess we're going to have this conversation. What you said about how you feel. Uh, <clears throat> Kira, I don't think we should talk about this here. I agree. We should not talk about this here. Then somewhere private? Yes, go somewhere private with the prince's best friend after you had a guy in your room while you were standing there in your underwear. That looks good. Holy crap. Okay. <sighs> I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'm not sure. Shut up, Drake. Shut up. Uh, why not? <sighs> if we're alone again together, I'm not sure I'll be able to stop myself from saying something stupid. It's very easy, Drake. You keep your mouth shut. That's how you stop yourself from saying something stupid. Good God. No, we don't need to police his behavior. He needs to police his behavior. 
And, like, if you can't... We're alone together right now! Literally, we're alone! Bertrand and Maxwell are not in the room! Yeah, no shit, you already have, Drake. You already have said something stupid. So... Uh, uh, I don't... Uh, Drake... See, like, she, she's supposed to be all sad, and I'm just like, you motherfucker, knock it off. <gasps> Drake! Kira! What, did we look like we were smooching? What's going on here? Ah! Uh, I mean, yes. Why are you two standing around chatting like ladies at an afternoon tea? Perfect! Drake just got called a lady. Ah-ha. Uh -huh. that, that was worth it. You both said you'd help, so help! Okay, tell us what the fuck to do, asshole. Right away, Duke Ramsford. I have a feeling there's a middle finger being raised at Bertrand's back as he walks away. <laughs> Drake, I'll do something stupid if I'm alone with you, Kira. Then perish. Yep. Uh, yeah, of course. As you resume arranging flowers, Drake ab abruptly abandons his base and or vase and walks away. Aw, can he not bear to be near us right now because he's so conflicted and so overcome with emotion? Uh, what the? He's, it, what's happening is he's being an idiot again. You watch as Drake quietly opens a door at the end of the hallway and slips inside. I bet he's trying to figure out what's going on with Maxwell and Bertrand. Yeah, he's totally not stomping off to pout or to do something else that um, we really shouldn't walk in on. Totally not. This is your chance to learn a little more about the Beaumont brothers and to spend some time alone with Drake. Well, I don't care about the second one, but the first one could be interesting. <sighs> so... Yeah. Oh, poor Drake. Couldn't imagine feeling bad about trauma. Yep. Yep. So, in the interest of learning more about House Beaumont, we are going to follow Drake. I really don't want to spend time alone with him, but I want to learn what the hell's going on. Alright. So you follow Drake down the hallway and into the room off to the side. <gasps> Drake, what are you doing back here? Uh, hopefully nothing untoward. Roth! So, you followed me, huh? No shit, that's why I'm standing here. This is the Beaumont study. How'd you even know this was here? Well, I used to come to this house a lot back in the day. We ran in the cir same circles, being friends with Shamar and all that. Oh, eh. My sister, Savannah, used to think the Beaumont brothers were the epitome of courtly life. Hmm. Remember, Savannah ran away from the court abruptly without even telling her brother. Uh-huh. And Maxwell's making mysterious payments. She practically worshipped them. Hmm. And you didn't. I found them to be more of an acquired taste. Like caviar with, with paprika. <laughs> Drake, you followed me? Kira, no, I'm here for the paprika fish. Yeah, exactly. You mean they both annoyed the hell out of you? Yup. God damn it, Drake! Yup, pretty much. Fuck off. Whenever I'd got whenever I got tired of their antics, I'd sneak off and come here to their study. So we can say you were the life of the party even back then, or your sister was the fun one. Oh, okay, so we know we know there's some stuff with his sister that he's not telling us, that he was not comfortable with telling us before. So bringing up his sister is a bad move. So you were the life of the party even back then? Let's not, let's not salt old wounds. Ha, ha. Whenever Savannah found me here, she would try to get me to join in on the fun. I don't even know where she is now. Yeah, see, that's why we don't bring up the sister. You don't have any way of finding her? You know, like a private detective or something? She stopped answering my calls and deleted all of her social media. Oh, shit. Yup. Wherever she is, all I know is that she doesn't want to be found. Hmm. 
Even by me. Yeah, well, maybe it's especially by you, Drake, her, her judgmental asshole of a brother. Yeah, can't imagine what, you know, younger sister wouldn't want to tell you. <sighs> and you know what? I don't blame her. I failed her. I don't even know how, but I know that I failed her. I didn't protect her from... from whatever it was that made her leave. Yeah. Well, yeah. Drake, so we can say, I'm sure you did everything you could, or maybe she just needs to deal with this on her own. Uh, uh, genuinely, I do think that Drake probably did everything he could, because that's his sister. Um, yeah, eh. <sighs> uh, Drake, I'm sure you did everything you could. Wah. I've spent hours trying to figure out if I could have done something different. If I could have done more. Do you have any idea what it was about? She was so happy. And then one day, after one of these Beaumont parties, she wasn't. Holy shit, Drake, are you really this stupid? She locked herself in her room, and I could hear her crying. Uh, if this is- if this does not turn out to be what I think it is, I am going to be genuinely gobsmacked. Because I'm pretty sure I know what this is. So, come on, Drake. Put- put two and two together here, boy. This is not- uh, this is not that hard. A couple days later, all of her things were packed, and she was just... gone. But that's enough about that. Yeah, it was starting to get emotional, wasn't it? A silence falls between the two of you as Drake goes to the far side of the room. You let your gaze roam around the study. So, this is the Beaumont study. We can say, are we allowed back here? Or, I expected more party hats. This does not seem like the type of place that Maxwell is allowed. So let's go there. Are we allowed back here? Well, they never lock the door, so I guess they don't care that much about who comes in. Besides, the point of this room is more to show off. Drake gestures at the walls, which are lined with ribbons and medals. As you can see, the Beaumont family has a lot to brag about. You let, your you let your eyes wander over to a lit display case, which contains a set of gleaming trophies and framed pictures of young Bertrand and Max Maxwell, both on horseback. I guess Bertrand and Maxwell had a habit of winning. A family tradition. I can see why Bertrand is always so worried about upholding the Beaumont name. Yeah, because he made it. Their house goes back a long way. I could never pity a rich kid like Bertrand, but I come very close to it sometimes. He's, a he's got a lot of pressure on him. I think his parents gave him a lot of talks about his heritage and Cordonia. And it's not like Maxwell's much help with anything. <laughs> God. Maxwell tries. Sometimes. <laughs> it's probably the most honest thing we've said. Huh. Maxwell's always been more interested in having fun. He couldn't care less about prestige and honor. That's one of the things I like about him, actually. Drake trails off for a moment, his eyes lingering on you, until he quickly looks away. Yeah, look away. Look away, my dude. Drake, we can say we need to talk about us. There is no us. Or about last night. I don't want to have either of these conversations, but there is no us, so Drake, about last night. Hell, Roth, what is there to say? Um, I need therapy? Don't you think we should talk about it? You know, to the cops? I wish I'd never said anything. Yeah, well, you said it, so now you gotta deal with it. The truth is that my best friend is head over heels for you. So it doesn't really matter how I feel, because that's where it has to end. God damn right, okay? And the only reason for that is I also like the prince. 
if I didn't like the prince, then this would be a non-issue. You could, you know, pursue me all you wanted, I guess, if I was into you. But I'm not. I'm very much not. God. Shamar is the only one who's ever looked out for me. The only one who gave a damn about me after my dad... <sighs> after he was gone. Huh. Aww. Poor, poor little guy. Yeah. Drake, be like me and drink your problems away. Yeah, that's pretty much... Mm-hmm. Ah, so something happened to his dad. That's great. The rest of the court was ready to cast us out. Never mind that he died protecting the royal family. Ooh, okay. Cool. Cool. Drake, I'm sorry. That's terrible. <laughs> Didn't you have a sister you loved? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't care much, but my mom and Savannah, it would have devastated them. Oh, yeah, you... <laughs> I didn't care much. I just never would have been able to see my best friend again. It's fine. God, like, he's been a jerk. I, I've, he's been a jerk so many times. Just take a gulp. Goddamn. Okay. Shamar made sure we had a place at the palace as long as we wanted one. I could never betray him by falling for his girl. Okay, so... You don't really control who you're attracted to on, like, any level, whether whether that's, like, um, sexual or romantic or aesthetic or whatever. Um, you control how you act, though. You very much control how you act. And, you know, with there, there are certain types of attraction that are very much not okay. Um, the recent movement by pedophiles to be included in the LGBTQ plus community can go die because that's not a valid sexual orientation that is predatory. And the reason for that is that children cannot give informed enthusiastic consent. So, huh, no. But that's the kind of thing that you can kind of therapize out of because it's really not... It's not anything to do with, like, gender preference or even, like, um, like, whether or not you even feel that type of attraction. It's, it's a type at that point, and it's a type that doesn't count. It's not, mm, please don't. So, like, when he says, I could never betray him by falling for his girl, like, too late, you probably already did, but you can choose not to make a big thing out of it. So, so yeah, that's... That's more appropriate, because, yeah, okay, all right. So that's what it all comes down to, Roth. Whatever I feel, it doesn't matter. Like, he's sitting here, this is supposed to be all tragic, and we're supposed to feel for him, you know, his feelings don't matter, blah, 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 but I'm literally sitting here going, no, your feelings in this don't matter. Not, and, you know, the reason for that is that we don't reciprocate. So, yeah, no, you're absolutely right, your feelings don't matter, my dude. Drake, so we can say, what about how I feel, or you're right, we can't do this, this isn't a question, you're right, we can't do this. Shamar needs us right now, both of us. In other words, don't go running away. You're right. I'd never forgive myself if... Drake looks down, his hands idly going to the desk at his side. Oh no. Whoa! What is it? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a fat envelope full of cash. Nice. That, that's what that is, all right. But why is it just here in the study? Hmm, why is it just here in the study? There's an address on the back. A French address. It looks like someone was going to mail this today. Yeah, I know, the funky robot is back. This is what they usually use when Olivia walks into the room, so yeah. Drake, this has got to be the missing money that Bertrand was talking about. We've got to, so we can say, take it to Bertrand or take it to Maxwell. Um, okay, if we take it straight to Bertrand, then, like, you know, that whole, that whole situation is resolved, but then he kind of wonders, like, where the hell it came from. Um, if we take it to Maxwell, we could potentially, like, have Maxwell kind of make amends with his brother by finding the cash, but the question is, who the hell left it in the study in the first place? 
because presumably there's only a small number of people who have access to this. I mean, like, the only other people would be, like, the, the house staff, the cleaning crew that Bertrand hired, but if they'd have found this, wouldn't they have, like, stayed? Um, hmm. Bertrand or Maxwell? Well, <laughs> I kind of don't want Maxwell to get yelled at again, so let's take it to Maxwell. Really? You want to trust Maxwell Beaumont with an envelope of cash? Well, we're going to tell Bertrand. Let's just say I trust him more than I trust Bertrand right now. I'll text him to meet us here. I mean, it's true. Bertrand could have, like, withdrawn all the money trying to, like, frame Maxwell, I guess. I just, I don't know why he'd do that, but it is technically possible. A few seconds later, Maxwell pops into the study. Uh, what's up? Your text sounded serious. It is serious, Maxwell. It's very serious. This is serious. Drake and I were in here and we found this envelope full of cash. Oh, uh, wow, that that must be the money that Bertrand was looking for. That someone was sending to France. Thank you. You guys, you guys saved my life. Bertrand was ready to kill me over this. All right, so we trusted Maxwell with the cash, for better or worse. No problem. Maxwell takes the money from you. I think it's too late to get the staff back, but at least we found it. But how do you think the money ended up here? Yeah, if you think I'm not looking into that address. Oh, well, you know, it's been so crazy lately. Bertrand probably put it here to give to the staff and then forgot about it or something. Yes, put it here to give to the staff with a French address on it. Kira, please tell me you wrote down this address. I don't think that Bertrand would forget something like that. Yeah, I'll have to talk to him about it. You know, you can always tell us if you're in some kind of trouble. Oh, oh, no, no more than usual. Anyway, thanks for finding it. Yeah, yeah. I owe you guys. I don't know it was actually the right decision there, but... Uh. But now we better get back to work before Bertrand realizes we've stopped cleaning. Oh, this is true. I'm gonna get our heads bitten off. As you and Drake head out of the study, you glance back and see Maxwell putting the envelope in his, po in his pocket. Something is off. You getting that feeling too? What the hell is this, a Nancy Drew game? So yeah, we went with Drake into the study. Okay. Yeah. It seems like Maxwell might be hiding something. Ya think? <laughs> Kira, I need a Cordonian detective and a French detective. Yeah, exactly. Somebody just please, like, Google the damn address. And I want to know what it is. Maybe we'll find more clues while we're prepping the house? Uh, I kind of doubt it, but okay. We'll see. Keep an eye out, but try not to be obvious about it. Well, that, that means this isn't a Nancy Drew game, then. Right. You and Drake leave the study and return to your work. All right. For the next several hours, you help clean and spruce up the estate until at last you meet with Bertrand and Maxwell in the main hall. Now, does Bertrand look like he's found some cash, maybe? Whew! I just did the last of the bathrooms. I think this place is finally ready to go. Yes, the house is actually acceptable. Cool. Wow, does something actually meet your standards? Do I need to call a doctor? <laughs> Probably. No, you don't. It's only that tomorrow will be something special. I can feel it. Oh no. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of dead talk, dead mom talk in either Nancy Drew or these games, so yeah, like, who knows. Just then, there's a knock on the estate's great door. Bertrand walks over to answer it. <gasps> who could it be at this hour? Please get that creepy face out of here. He opens the door to find Prince Shamar. Bertrand immediately bows. Oh no, poor Bertrand's gonna have a heart attack here. <gasps> oh, your highness, 
you're early. Gee, I wonder why. <clears throat> I mean, what a pleasant surprise. I hope I'm not disturbing anything. No, not not really disturbing so much as interrupting an investigation, Shamar. You're you're interrupting. And just, yeah. Of course not. I hope you find everything in order. Uh, sure. As grand as I remember it. Of course. Come on in. If you'll excuse us, my brother and I will check that your room accommodations are in order. Which here means, oh my god, quickly fluff the pillows and change the sheets because we didn't do that yet. In the meantime, I'm sure Lady Kira here will entertain you. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll entertain him alright. I'm sure she will. The prince walks in and straight up to you. Bertrand grabs Maxwell's arm and leads him away, leaving you two alone. <laughs> Shamar Drew, here to solve the murders of the two other queens. <laughs> yeah. Well, remember, the one, the one just left. His brother's mom just left. There's no indication that she's actually dead. So. You're a delightful surprise. You're assuming I'm here to see you, huh? Well, yes. Yes, I am. You know, we can say you better be, or you shouldn't be here at all. The party isn't until tomorrow. Okay, no, like, you shouldn't be here. Let's, let, let, let's not drive him away. You know, you better be. What gave it away? Oh god, I think I actually... Uh, part of me actually died a little reading this. You have my name written all over your lips. Oh, God. Okay. There is no hiding from you, is there? Uh, apparently not. Not a chance. Ugh. Okay. Sure. I arrived early because I knew you'd be here, and I wanted to see you before the festivities began. Yeah, I've written on my written on your lips in Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> I know all of this must seem strange to you, jet-setting around Cordonia, attending grand formal events. I imagine it's much different from dating, as you usually know it in New York. Uh, yeah, kinda? Huh, <laughs> you could say that, yeah. Usually you get time alone with your date. I appreciate that you've thrown yourself into courtly life with such enthusiasm, but I wanted to meet you halfway, so to speak. Ooh, yeah? Okay. Oh? Yeah, what, what the hell does that mean? I also have this idea. It's maybe a little silly, but... Will you go on a date with me? Aww, that's cute. He wants to date us. A date? Thought that was what us, like, running away for, for cronuts was. <laughs> My first true date. I want it to be with you. Oh, Threw up in my mouth a little there. We are on an estate surrounded by acres of vineyards. Where would we go? What would we do? Also, wasn't our trip to the Statue of Liberty basically a date? I mean, really? Okay. I'll leave that to me. I promise you it'll be a proper first date. Okay. Tonight, I just want to be Kira and Shamar, two normal people going on a normal date. Uh-huh. What do you say? I know it's a bit last minute. Yeah, where are your bodyguards? Yeah, drink depending on the type of vineyard. I mean, it, this this is a pretty heavy... Like, when it, as soon as you say vineyard, that pretty much means grapes, but... Shamar, so we can say, I'd love to go on a date with you, which is a diamond choice that I've already purchased, of course. Or, I'm a little tired after today, so let, no, let's go, let's go on a date. Let's go on a date. I think I can do ordinary for one evening. You can be normal, but I don't think you can ever be anything less than extraordinary. You can be normal, but I don't think you can ever be anything less than extraordinary. I don't, hmm. That doesn't, that doesn't follow for me. You're really pulling out all the stops, aren't you? For you, definitely. 
If you think about it, it's our first real date. I mean, we've been spending time together, but it's been here and there. And at the Statue of Liberty. I'll be sure to break out the awkward icebreaker questions and first date nerves. God, how much does a polar bear weigh? Sounds perfect. I need to make a couple arrangements, but I'll meet you at your room in an hour. Oh, is he gonna pick us up and everything? Oh, do we do we have to have Bertrand there to be our dad and tell him that he has to have his home by 11? Yes, I'm in the east wing, fourth door from the right. I'll see you then. You could just knock on random doors until you find us. It's not like there's a bunch of other girls. Later in your room... Better get ready for my date with Shamar. This is your chance to dress up before your big date because Shamar's gonna give a shit, I guess. Tap the closet icon to change. Hmm, should I go with this? I think I look perfect. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother changing. A little later, Shamar shows up at your door, his hand behind his back. Uh-oh. Kira? Your Highness. <laughs> Please, just Shamar. These are for you. He flourishes a bouquet of roses, and you take them, inhaling in the sweet scent. In inhaling the sweet scent, not inhaling in. <laughs> no, I'm not wearing the apple outfit. We're not, no, no. Said normal people. Normal people, Piscopoli. Normal people. Mmm. Roses. Are they... Were they the right thing to get for a first date? Well, yeah. Shamar, they're amazing. <laughs> I'm so glad you like them. You sniff them one more time before dropping them in a vase near the door and putting your arm out for Shamar. Shall we? Because basically, this is probably what we would have worn on our first date in New York anyway, if it had been a date. Shamar leads you down the hallway and up the grand staircase. So, are you going to spill about what we're doing tonight? I did some research on traditional first dates. Oh my god, he went to WikiHow, didn't he? You know he did. You know he did. You research dates? That's either super adorable or kind of nerdy. Uh, no, it's it's pretty damn cute. It's super adorable. Hey, I wanted tonight to be perfect. And what did your research tell you? That a traditional first date is dinner than a movie. Sure, I don't know if people still do that. But there aren't any local theaters secure enough to be cleared of any threats. <laughs> Are we going to have the bodyguard, like, looming over us for this entire dinner? Because that's going to be awkward. <laughs> Wiki, how do I get a goth girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, we're going to be focusing on the dinner part. I mean, what do you mean? This place doesn't have Netflix? This way. His hand slides to the small of your back, guiding you forward as he opens a door on the second floor. Inside, you find a rustic game room where a romantic dinner for two has been set up. The light from the fire sparkles gold against the crystal and silverware on the table. Aw, how pretty. Aw, Shamar. Dinner for two at the finest restaurant I could find. Or recreate. That's cute, though. He's hol he holds out a chair for you, waiting until you take it before he sits across from you. As you're seated, Maxwell pokes his head into the room. Right? Shamar. Kira. Shamar. Bodyguard! Yeah, that's- oh god, that's probably about how this would go. But aw, he's like- he's making dinner for us and everything. Aw. Or maybe Maxwell's making dinner. Maybe we should be worried. Ready? Maxwell's like his little accomplice. This is great. Perfect timing. Diners, welcome to Chateau Beaumont. It's probably dinner and a show. Okay. Maxwell comes in, wheeling a cart with two covered plates and a bottle of sparkling wine. 
He pops the wine and starts pouring it into flutes. I like how they don't call it champagne, it's sparkling wine. Maxwell? You're our waiter tonight? This is awkward. Of course! Hey, isn't this funny, Kara? When we first met, you were our waitress. Yeah, I mean, there's something poetical about that. Heh. <laughs> I'm now super nervous. I hope I can be half as professional as you were. Too late. Now, <clears throat> For your dinner, the finest bubbly Chateau Beaumont can offer, and a simple homemade tomato pasta, as requested, Shamar. Enjoy. He lets himself out of the room, and Shamar lifts his glass of sparkling wine. See, I think I could even eat everything on this table. This is great. What shall we toast to? We should toast to Cordonia. First dates. Or Maxwell's excellent service. Eh. I feel like toasting to my brother figure on a first date is a little weird, so let's let, we'll just we'll just toast to first dates. So far, this one's starting out great. I mean you're feeding us and you're giving us wine, it's great. Here's to first dates, and the hope that this will continue to be great. You clink your glasses together. Oh god, are they gonna make us say cheers? Oh my god, they are! Cheers. Oh good, I don't have to voice it for both. You sip the wine and take a bite of the pasta. It's true, Shamar does seem to like talking about family during dates, which means we need to set an example. Mmm, this tastes wonderful. I'm glad you like it. I wasn't sure what to request, so I chose this. It's a simple pasta, but it makes me feel nostalgic. I used to eat this when I was a kid. Really? With your dead mom? <laughs> it's great. No need to get too fancy on the first date. We can just take it slow and get to know each other. Mmm, take it slow. Yeah, anything about this has been slow. Sure. Mmm, SpaghettiOs. Yeah, yeah. That'd, mm, that'd be me. Of course. Now, I believe I was promised some awkward icebreaker questions. Oh, I think I can even eat SpaghettiOs now. Yay! I've got an icebreaker question for you. We can say, do you believe in aliens? Are you a coffee or tea person? Or if you could only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Hmm. Hmm. Um. Okay, two of these actually feel like they're damn near to make or break questions. And that is, do you believe in aliens? And are you a coffee or tea person? I'm going to tell you why. If your partner is into, like, the the conspiracy theory, like, paranormal, you know, Area 51 shit, and you're not, that's going to be a bad time. Um, especially if they're particularly serious about it and or you're particularly not. Um, and are you a coffee or tea person? This could go two ways. They could either resent you for, like, if like if one of you is coffee and the other one's tea, um, they could either resent you for being the opposite, or it's really good because um, then you guys aren't messing with each other's morning drinks. If you're both the same, however, you could very quickly run out of what you need, and that could be bad. Um, hmm. So are you a coffee or tea person? I guess doesn't really make that much difference. If you can only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what it would it be is a nice, like, innocuous question. I don't know. Do you believe in aliens? Let's just find out. Shamar laughs. Ha! <laughs> Excellent. I feel like I'm in a New York bar already. I don't know if this is what they ask in a New York bar, but it's what I'm asking. <laughs> hey, you're still not off the hook. You still need to answer. Shamar, I do not require liquid sustenance. Aliens, huh? I believe that we haven't yet explored the entirety of space, and even though we haven't run into anything yet, that doesn't mean they don't exist. This is, this is, yeah, we have not, we haven't even really explored space. That's not a definitive answer, but I'll take it for now. Are all first date questions like this fun but a little silly? Eh, no, you really more often ask, like, what do you do for a living? But we kind of already know those answers. More or less. I can't believe you've never been on a real first date. He's a fucking prince. When would he ever have opportunity to go on a real first date? 
Ah, yes. Well, as you know, life as part of the royal family can have its limitations since I have to consider things like schedules and security and my nationalistic stepmother. I've been introduced to women I've been interested in, of course, but our time together was spent at courtly functions, not on dates in a traditional way. And have you ever been serious about anyone before? Ooh, we're get we're getting we're getting deep now. Once I thought I might have been, but the spark wasn't there. Ooh, the spark. You mean that thing that I can't contribute because you almost certainly mean sexual attraction? He reaches out and takes your hand in his, twining your fingers together. Before you, Kira, I didn't even know what was missing with everyone else. Mmm, mm-hmm, okay. Shamar, stop that. And now, what about you? Are there any former lovers I need to worry about? Hopefully not our, like, prom date co-worker Daniel back there. He's afraid of the rats. I mean, if that's not too personal a question, dude, we just asked you. you it's fair game, don't worry about it. Well... So we can say, I've dated some, I've dated a lot, I mean a lot, or a lady's romantic history is best left a mystery. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're doing the back and forth thing again. It drives me nuts. Well, I've dated some. It's probably the closest we get to my kind of answer. Not that many. I'm choosy who I spend my time with. It's a good life when you can spend it with the people you truly care about. I mean, that's true. Yeah, and I don't regret anything. It's brought me to this moment, hasn't it? As if Daniel wasn't made to be the stereotypical gay waiter. It's true. It's true. I just, he, seriously, he looks, he looks like a prom date. He really does. He looks so young and baby-faced. Ah, <sighs> okay. <laughs> you brought me to this moment. It has. He smiles at you, and for the next little while, you and Shamar talk over your meal. Aw. What's the first thing you'd save if your castle was on fire? It would be my guitar. Oh, oh, he, oh my god. He sings too. Okay, or plays guitar. Okay. You play the guitar? Uh, rather horribly, but it's my mother's. There we go, we hadn't heard from the dead mom in about, like, three episodes. So, the restaurant needed the twink demographic. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> I have a feeling their their way, their uh, manager wasn't thinking that far ahead. Alright, that the guitar is my mother's. She took it up for fun, but she was great. She'd sing when we went on picnics. Aw, I'd like to hear you play sometime. Yes, sometime. <laughs> sometime when literally no one else is around. And later... Are you more of a cat or a dog person? Oh, I'm, so we can say definitely into cats, a dog person, or more of a people person. Well, unfortunately, I'm allergic to both, but I'm definitely not a people person. But, um, my cat allergy can potentially murder me where my dog allergy can't, so I'm a dog person. Excellent. We could have an entire kennel. I wonder, I wonder what he would have said if we, if we liked cats. He probably would have liked cats, too. Probably. You're a dog person, too? Is it obvious? This is often my, my response when people are like, oh, you know, look at this kid. Is, aren't they so cute? And I'm like, oh, yeah, kids are so cute. I want a dog. Horses, according to the game so far. Yeah, apparently that's what we like. I knew I was attracted to you for a reason. Yeah, it has nothing to do with his, like, nice symmetric features and the fact that he's in line to rule a country. Yeah, nothing, nothing at all to do with that. And during the dessert course. Oh, we're, we're going to get all soulful now. When we first met, I told you that I wanted to see the world. Uh, that's right. 
thanks to you, I've skied in the Alps, toured a majestic mountainside on horseback, and now I'm enjoying an authentic Italian dinner in Cordonia's most exclusive restaurant. Eh, that's one way to look at it. Nothing but the best for you. But what's your dream? Your heart's desire? I mean, I think, I feel like we talked about this a little bit in New York, but more than peace and prosperity for Cordonia? Yes, dude, stop dodging the question. I'm talking to Shamar, not the prince. Maybe this is sentimental, but it's been on my mind lately, especially given... Ah, oh, well, never mind that. Yeah, okay. What I really want is to have a family. Aw. Maybe not this year or the next, but eventually. And not the type that most kings have, but one where we're close and listen to each other. I've never mentioned it to anyone before. It's a pretty mundane dream now that I say it aloud. Aw, oh, this, this is supposed to trigger my nesting instincts, and I'm just like, okay. Shamar, we can say it's a little mundane for a prince, or I think it's sweet. Don't judge his dreams. God, that's judgy. Take a drink. Don't judge the man's dreams. Okay, no. Shamar, I think it's sweet. I know it's cliche to say this, but the more I live, the more I realize life is nothing without the right person to share it with. Okay. The most precious thing anyone has is time. Wow, he's he's turned into a, a fortune cookie now. Yeah, that literally is me. Kira's like, okay. Yeah, that'd, that'd be me sitting there. I'd be going, oh shit, because that's not what I want. You never know just how much time you have, or never know just how much you have left. And when it's gone, it's gone. This is a damn fact. I want to spend my time with the people I care about. With you, Kira, more than anyone else. Mm, okay. Ugh, Shamar. I just had to say that. I had to make sure you knew how I felt. I treasure all of our moments together, too. Oh, God. Do pe people don't do this, I feel like. You have no idea how much it means to me to hear you say that. Well, this got awfully romantic for a first date. Yeah, if this happened on an actual first date, this would be your cue to, like, change your name and leave the country. But, you know, it's not really our first date, so... Are you telling me that guys don't lavish you with praise and adoration on all your first dates? Uh, not, no. Not so much that way, no. No, not exactly. What a pity for those fools, then. Aw. <laughs> okay. Later, Shamar walks you back to your room. Thanks for coming out tonight, Kira. I had a great time. Yeah, dinner was lovely. Does this mean a second date is in the cards? Woo! If you want it to be like a real first date, this is probably where you say that you'll text me and then wait a week to actually do it. Probably. I could never wait that long. Yeah, you don't seem like you could. Me neither. You stop in front of your door and turn to face Shamar. Good night, Kira. Hmm. So we can say, where's my good night kiss or good night, Shamar? All right, kissing's an option. Take a drink. And, as you know, princes in need of kissing. Where's my good night kiss? I was working my way up to that. Yeah, you come 90, I come 10. Is that the rule? That I recall? He leans down, kissing you sweetly at first, then more passionately as you press against him. Whoa, whoa, we, we, we got the got the saucy music on now, okay. Kira, somehow kissing you once never feels like enough. Oh boy. If you've never been on a date, 
have a feeling there's other things you haven't done too, at least for a while. Yeah, that'd be that'd be why. It's because you actually want that. Well, no one told you to stop. Yeah, no one told you to. St well, I mean, you did kind of say, "Where's my goodnight kiss?" Okay, yeah, this is this is actually this is actually okay. All right, all right. Whoa, okay. He groans and pins you against the door as he lays kisses against your neck, his hands weaving through your hair. Mmm, that feels nice. What would, like, if we'd have done one of those, like, super short hairstyles, what would it have said? Kira. Were you going to say his name back? Ah. You tug at his shirt, pulling it up enough to run... Whoa, whoa, what? You tug at his shirt, pulling it up enough to run your hands over his bare chest and around him, tugging him closer. Holy shit, y'all, we're undressing the prince in the middle of the hallway. Whoo! Okay. Alright. Cool. When you, fear, when you hear footsteps from down the hall. Yeah, this is gonna look good. Okay. <gasps> oh! Yeah, oh. <laughs> he immediately lets go of you, stepping a respectful distance away. Good man. You both breathe hard in the silence, listening. And after a moment, Shamar smiles ruefully at you. That was close. Yeah, really. Though being caught in a covert makeout sesh is a classic first date trope. Yeah, when you're like 16. <laughs> Check that off the list. But really, I have kept you out too late. He lifts your hand to his lips, kissing it. Good night, Kira. So we went on a first date with the prince. Good night, Shamar. The next morning... Rise and shine, our little budding princess! Go away. Yes, up, up, up! Today's the big day! Is it really? We've prepared the house from top to bottom, and now for the final step. Preparing our representative lady. Let me guess. Go, go, go. Maxwell, make sure she's presentable. Yep, we're off to that roving boutique. Right away. You walk into your closet where one dress hangs on the rack. Uh, this is quite the, uh, selection. Yeah, if anything, I'm a budding queen because there's going to be, it's literally going to jump straight from princess to queen here. So, yeah. It's all we could get a hold of, but I thought it'd make you look like the princess you're destined to be. The local dress so the local dress shop said they'd charge it to us if we want to keep it. I think we do. All right, I'll try it on. Uh, no, no, go. Oh, that's not flattering at all. No, the that waistline is way too high, and no, we're not going anywhere near that. We're gonna we're gonna stick with. We're gonna stick with this one. Yeah, no. Whew. Okay, bullet dodged. What do you think? Honestly, you look great. Thank you, Maxwell. And our obligatory guilt trip. This is your last chance to pick your outfit for the Beaumont Bash. Tap the closet button to change. Yeah, no, I'm happy with what I got. This outfit feels more me. Anything you lights up the room, Kira. That's okay. Weird. Then I'm ready. Come on. We're gonna throw the best party ever. <laughs> you look less like something Olivia would wear now. Yeah. All right. Will you and the Beaumonts pull off a successful bash? Find out in the next chapter. Okay. So with that... Um, I'm going to take a short break and we're going to make a run at uh, the next chapter here tonight. Um, reason for that being that there won't be a stream on Friday, this Friday, because I have somewhere else to be over the time where I'll be streaming. So, assuming that I can stop OBS from crashing on me, we will, um, we will proceed with chapter 16 
here in a couple minutes. So, maybe it'll load, maybe it won't. We'll find out. But, um, but yeah, that, that dress though, whoo, like, and I don't even know how, but the bodice doesn't even look that flattering. Like the top, the off the shoulder thing just does not look good on that model. And like, I think, I think it's too, like the, um, the area across the boobs is like too narrow or something, but like they need, they need to drop the waist on that. Definitely, because having it up that high just, mm, no, it makes her hips look like they're five miles long. So, all right, um, I, I will be back here in a few. Hello, my lovely viewers, and welcome back. Um, so we're going to start chapter 16 of the Royal Romance, book one. Uh, da -da -da -da. So it says, can you attract the prince and survive the Beaumont bash? It's, seriously, when you say it like that, it does sound like Bertrand is a serial killer who kills with a blunt object. So yeah, hmm, okay, should be fun. All right, so we have chapter 16, the Beaumont Bash. All right, here we go. It's the evening of the Beaumont Bash. You've just finished dressing up in the outfit you chose with Maxwell, which I thought was in the morning. Um, when there's a, or when you chose with Maxwell that morning. Oh, okay. When there's a knock on your door, someone knocked on our door, take a drink.
Kira, guess what time it is? Time to impress? Oh, look at you. You're all dressed and ready. Yeah, I can put on a dress by myself, Maxwell. Well, we can say it's a big night or I can get ready by myself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I can get ready by myself. Oh, I'm sure, but I'm here to make sure everything runs smoothly. Yeah, no shit, time to die. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, Maxwell, you're, you're not very good at making things run smoothly, my dude. I'm sorry. Think of it like I'm your assistant and personal trainer all rolled into one. Huh, <laughs> sometimes this feels more like a princess boot camp. Hell no, there's, there's a game idea. Ha, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you're ready, so let's get to it. Bertrand wanted me to escort you. Okay, cool. Escort me where? To to the to the altar where we're making the sacrifice, Kira. It's a surprise. How many surprises can there be? Maxwell leads you through the manor. And into the boutique. What? Uh, the boutique, but what? I need to oversee a few adjustments to the ballroom decorations. Be your charming self in here. How, how does this boutique follow us everywhere? I'm so confused. Maxwell quickly exits the room. Uh, that was a little weird. <clears throat> Just then, a dressing room opens and Prince Shamar steps out. Okay. Shamar! I, I don't, yeah, are we in a Groundhog Day loop? I don't know. Shamar! Oh, Lady Kira, what a coincidence running into you. Uh, what now? It's interesting. I was told to wait here even though I'm already dressed. Yeah, he probably heard you. I think perhaps someone is trying to give us some time alone together. Oh, Maxwell, Maxwell trying to be the wingman over here. Well, we can say, I'm not complaining. It seems the Beaumonts are more wily than I thought, or it's probably nothing. Uh, well, I'm not complaining. I like the results. I do too. You look great. And is this what you're wearing tonight? I was just deciding that now. Yeah, no shit. Shamar, why are you in a women's boutique? Um, this doesn't look like it particularly caters to to people of the masculine persuasion. He's, he's just deciding now what to wear. Since we're hosting, you could dress to match me. Oh, that could cause quite a stir. It'd be a public way to show how close we are, which means it's probably a bad idea. It would, but it'd also be a rather bold move. Uh, uh, it's... no, it's not worth it. Express individual styles. It's okay. You'll look amazing no matter what you do. Hmm. As long as you approve. <laughs> Who are his traditional attire, meaning the clothes that he's pretty much always worn? It's hard to disapprove of you. I'll see you tonight for the party, Lady Kira. Until then. Shamar bows before walking out the door. Maxwell emerges from the other room. Whew, those were some adjustments that needed overseeing. Yeah, Maxwell, you're subtle. Uh-huh, sure. Uh-huh. Maxwell, was that just an elaborate ploy you and Bertrand put together to get me alone with Shamar? Who the hell said Bertrand had anything to do with it? This honestly sounds kind of like a Maxwell thing. What? Us? 
I mean, it's not like we're sponsoring you to win the prince's hand or anything. That'd be silly. Hmm, <clears throat> I like how you operate. Thanks, Kira. But I do actually want to escort you to the ballroom. The party's starting soon, and as hosts, we should be there to greet everyone. Do I have to greet everyone? I'd just really like to just tell Olivia to fuck off. And Madeline. But look, we made it so fancy. You walk into the ballroom. The luxurious cloth-draped tables have been neatly arranged and decorated with candles and flower bouquets. The plates and silverware gleam under the soft glow of the lights. Wow, it really came together. I'm sure Bertrand's pleased with the work. Moderately, at least. You walk past the tables. On a dais where the head table sits, you see an open binder with a diagram of the room inside. Is that the seating chart? Sure is. Bertrand must have arranged everyone already. He's already put you next to Prince Shamar and the King and Queen, so that's ready to go. You scan through the names of the guests and come across Olivia's. You tap her name on the chart. You know, through all the hustle of yesterday, I never had the chance to give the seating arrangement by... Um... Approval. Uh, approval? Oh, that approval. I remember what Olivia did to you back at her estate. A uh, little payback wouldn't hurt. Let's see. She's currently sitting with Madeline, Penelope, and Kiara. Bertrand wanted to cut her off from Prince Shamar, but respectfully leave her up front with the other noble ladies. We should leave her be, sit her in the back, Sit her in the back and ruin her meal. No, Kira, be a good person. Be better than Olivia. We should leave her be. You know, I'm over what she did. <laughs> Bertrand will thank you for keeping the peace. Mm, no, he won't. <laughs> well, I'm thanking you on his behalf. Just then, the clock in the ballroom strikes the hour, and Bertrand comes over to you and Maxwell, grinning widely. You look uncharacteristically happy. Oh, why wouldn't I be? We're showing off the splendor of House Beaumont. And, fortune willing, it's also our chance to show the court just how well the prince and Lady Kira are suited right before the coronation. If everything goes well, tonight will be a grand accomplishment. So, places, you two. Guests will be let in, and we should greet them with a smile. Oh god, okay. Sure, here we go. Bertrand walks to the doors of the ballroom and throws them open. The room comes to life as guests arrive, and servers distribute drinks and appetizers. Yeah, remember our caviar with paprika. Okay. It's been a while since I've seen Bertrand so happy. It kind of reminds me of how he used to be. Who knows, we might even see fun Bertrand tonight. Now that I want to see. <laughs> Honestly, it means a lot to me to see him in such good spirits. Let's make this night one to remember. Right! As guests stream in, you catch sight of Drake. Good. Just who I wanted here. Welcome to the Beaumont Bash. You'll recognize some of these fine floral arrangements as yours. Huh. After yesterday, I was skeptical about this place being ready in time, but... Looks like you're about to have an actual party here. Okay. Sure. I know, right? Though, you don't look like you're dressed for the occasion. Really? This is what he's always worn. You don't like my look? This shirt's clean. What proof do we have of this? Don't make me smell you. I guess that's the most I should expect. I don't think I've ever seen you dress up for these fancy events. It might be a nice change of pace. Oh, are we hinting? We're hinting. Eh, yeah, fashion is subjective. Besides, people are here to see the prince, not me. 
Well, this is true. You shake your head as Hannah bounces over. Kira! Maxwell! I've never been to the Beaumont Estate before. This looks wonderful. Well, thank you, Hannah. And you look lovely tonight, Kira. As always, you look gorgeous, too. A server comes near your group, handing out the caviar and paprika appetizers. Oh, God, here we go. Okay. Our creations. I hope people like them. You overhear some of the ladies standing near you. Uh, what is this dish? Maxwell leans over to Kiara's table. What you have there is a deconstructed delicacy of caviar cultivated from the pampered hake fish of the Swedish fjords with paprika harvested from a micro-nursery in Provence. Provence. Sure, I probably said half of that wrong. The ladies take delicate bites of the appetizers. Wow, so fancy. I like them. Spicy, salty, definitely unique. Penelope. Hmm, it reminds me of when I dined at the top of La Tour Eiffel in Paris. Did you use the same chef? Eh, someone comparable. Sure. Maxwell turns back to you. I don't think this would have fooled Kiara. If she's actually, like, either from France or spent any time in France, no. No. Well, the reactions to our appetizers seem mostly positive. They like the food, so we can say we put our blood, sweat, and tears into those. They should enjoy them, or really, I can't believe we pulled that off. No, really, I can't believe we pulled that off. Yeah, I really thought this would be a complete disaster. I told you, it's all in the marketing. Well, there's, it's not an insignificant thing. You smile, but it fades as Lady Madeline and Lady Olivia enter together. Great. All right, here we go. And Duchess Olivia, Comtesse Madeline, welcome. Lady Kira, don't you look... Well, nice. And the Beaumonts have certainly outdone themselves. Eh, fuck you, Madeline. That was sneering. Take a drink. Yes, this isn't as tacky an affair as I'd imagined it would be. And drink again. <laughs> Lady Funky Robot, yeah. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm. As you should. Now, let's get this evening over with. Where's the wine? Olivia brushes past you, but Madeline lingers. She looks at Prince Shamar, sitting at his table up front, before turning back to you. You must be feeling pretty smug. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been hearing some rumors that you've become the frontrunner going into the coronation. <laughs> Madeline, it's not a race. Yeah, well, we are pretty much treating Shamar like he's a piece of meat, so, you know. Isn't it, though? In a way. Uh, no. It's about the prince and who he wants to marry. Oh, right. You may have the upper hand while we're at the Beaumont Estate, but that doesn't mean you'll be chosen as queen. You never know what might happen. Hmm. Madeline, so we can say may the best woman win, or it's okay to admit defeat. Uh, no, Madeline, may the best woman win. Be nice. Yes, the best woman. Oh, that's sneering again. Take a drink. And also, fuck you, Madeline. As Madeline walks away, Bertrand stands up on the dais to address the attendees. Welcome, everyone. If you'll please take your seats, dinner will begin shortly. Oh, that's my cue. I have a seat in the back, so I'll see you after dinner. Mmm, will you, though? 
And I'd better go and take my seat with the other ladies. I wish we could have all sat together. Hey, don't look so disappointed, Roth. You're sitting with royalty. I learned a long time ago I don't fit in there. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm so... Such an outsider. Whatever. But don't worry, I'm sure you'll be able to handle one dinner without us. Right. Yeah, I'm at least gonna make sure you guys get, like, proper food this time. We'll catch up later. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a server lead Olivia to a table at the front. Here you are, your grace. At the front, as I deserve. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Don't get too excited. Jealous much? <laughs> yeah, let, let those two go at it all night. Let's see what happens. You take your seat at the head table, Shamar sitting to your left with Bertrand on your right. As the king and queen are seated beside the prince, servers come out bearing the main course. <gasps> oh, chicken cordon bleu. This is my favorite, Duke Ramsford. How did you know? Google, that's how. I didn't, but I asked the chef to prepare what he thought the classiest meal should be. Apparently, you have exquisite taste. Wow, Bertrand, you goddamned liar. Dude. Mmm, I know you're flattering me, but I can't say I mind. Of course not, nationalist. The food is delicious, the wine excellent, and the setting is magnificent. Duke Ramsford, you do your house proud. Yes, how did I how did I know, your majesty, what your what your favorite dish was? My network of spies, probably. It's kind of you to say that, sir. I regret we could only host you for one night. Well, it can't be helped with the social season coming to an end. We must return to the palace. Yeah, you need to discuss that whole line of succession thing. I can't believe the coronation is coming up so soon. Yeah, Shamar will soon have a lot of choices to make. Yeah, poor guy. I'm feeling confident about my decisions. Ooh, is he really? Ooh. Are you now? Have you already made up your mind on the lady you wish to marry? Hmm, has he? Well... Now, now, he shouldn't reveal that until the coronation. It wouldn't be proper. Hmm. If you were chosen, Lady Kira, do you feel like you'd be ready to marry? Uh huh. Sure. It wouldn't be a cakewalk being married to Shamar. Uh. <laughs> yeah, not with you as in laws. Of course she'd be ready. Hey, Bertrand, I got a mouth, you know. A Duke Ramsford, no need to answer for her. Oh, I'd be ready for marriage, or I'd be ready because marriage is about, so we can say love, I care for Shamar, eh, that's naive. Hard work, I'm no stranger to that. Eh. Or compromise, I'm an excellent compromiser. Uh, no, marriage is about hard work. I'm no stranger to that. A truthful answer. It is about working through tough times, many of which would stem from Shamar being the crown prince. Crown pin prince, bitch, he's about to be king. Okay? I know who Shamar is. Hmm. You do. <laughs> Easy there. Down boy. Well, that satisfies me. Okay. Cool. Didn't know it was so easy. Beside you, you can see Bertrand smile. You continue to socialize with the royals over the next courses of dinner until you finish with dessert. What a delight that meal was. Well, glad you're happy. Duh, or dessert makes everything better. Yeah, Shamar, Kira, Diddy Kong. There's so many names to be said. As does good company. He smiles at you and you laugh. The king looks from the pair of you to the queen and takes her hand. Oh, oh, is he hinting? I remember being young once. I always feel young when I'm with you. How young could you have two have been when you met? He went through two other wives before he met you. 
Oh, my dear. When all's said and done, I hope Shamar makes the right choice. Uh, that's what we all hope for, sir. Bertrand dabs at his mouth with his napkin, then stands, gathering everyone's attention by tapping his glass. And now that the dessert course has been served, the Grand Hall is now open. Please join us there for the after-dinner festivities. Oh dear. Yeah, my two other 30-day marriages. Yeah. Bertrand leads the way as numerous nobles stand up to join him. Cool. Party time now. You proceed into the Grand Hall with the other nobles. Bertrand walks halfway up the staircase. Citizens, nobles, friends. We've gathered here today to celebrate the end of the social season. So, if you'll hear me out, I'd like to share a few words. Maxwell nudges you, nodding to the back of the staircase. It's time to pick our weapons. You and I are going to saber open some champagne. All right. All right, cool. While Bertrand continues his speech, you and Maxwell sneak behind the staircase to the wall of weapons. A couple bottles of champagne lie next to the displays. All right, so I guess we're supposed to go for the buy battle axe. So let's, let's go for that. Let's go for the axe. Heavy duty. Maxwell lifts the flail from the wall. Oh my god, no, no, my dude, no. This is gonna, this can only end in tears. Okay. Is an assassination about to happen because it really feels it? Yeah, uh, yeah. And so, with all of House Beaumont with me, let us propose a toast. That's our cue. Oh my god, this is so, this is so awful. Maxwell leads you up the stairs, weapons and champagne bottles in hand. <laughs> this is getting better. Uh, to our gracious royal family. To all those here tonight. And to, so we can say, all those out there looking for love. The Brothers Beaumont. Or the party! Uh... Uh, let's let's go let's go with the brothers Beaumont. There are hosts, our legendary hosts, who I wouldn't be here without, because <laughs> they kidnapped me. Let's rock this place to the ground. Maxwell swings the flail into a champagne bottle, shattering it entirely. Champagne runs down the steps. Okay, well remember we don't have a cleaning crew, so we've never let a lost bottle stop us before. Bring out another! Woo! Oh my god, Maxwell, calm down. I should hit the bottle. You swing, slicing off the top of the bottle. Champagne foams out, dripping onto the stairs. With an axe. Whoa! It took me much longer to master that move. From all of us at House Beaumont, thank you! Everyone cheers as the servers rush forward to hand out glasses of champagne to everyone. Maxwell runs to the top of the stairs. The king and queen approach you and Bertrand. Splendid night, Duke Ramsford, Lady Kira. You've delivered the type of enjoyable evening we would have expected from a Beaumont celebration. You're too kind, your majesties. Uh, but we should take our leave. The old folks like us can't handle the late night events. Kira volunteered at the Ren Fair, apparently. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Everybody needs waitresses. Bring out the blindfolds! Find my bow and arrow! Put an apple on the bust of my great-grandfather! Oh my god, no. Nobody give him weapons. Any more weapons than he's already got. Although we'll sure it'll be something to remember. He does look so unnatural smiling. It's very, very odd. And try not to incapacitate half the court again. Well, too late. His <laughs> plans already, are already made. Uh, perhaps only a third this time. Ha ha ha. They all share a laugh. Bertrand raises his glass to the king and queen. You'll be sorely missed when you retire, sir. It's been an honor knowing you all these years. Oh, Duke Ramsford, that's not necessary. 
I think it is, Mum. To the crown. To the crown. Hmm. Thank you. We'll see you again at the coronation, and hopefully the results will be favorable for us all. The king and queen take their leave. Well, well, well. What? You look pleased. Did you hear that? Favorable for us all. Lady Kira, I think the future is looking bright. So, does that mean we're about to see Fun Bertrand? He simply smiles at you and picks up an open bottle of champagne, taking a big swig. Ooh, oh boy, we're gonna see something. Maxwell! What? Let the revelry begin! Oh yeah! Oh god. Oh, this is gonna get good. Music blasts from the sound system. Maxwell slides down the railing. From the doorways leading into the room, professional dancers and acrobats stream in. Oh, wow, okay. Cool. I hope you're ready, because the Maxwell special is in the house. He moonwalks onto the middle of the floor to the music's increasing tempo. We're going to end up seeing more of Bertrand than we wanted to, aren't we? It's possible. I am the myth, the man, the legend. Witness me! Oh god, I don't want to witness you, Maxwell. Please keep your pants on. Oh, Maxwell drops into a flurry of breakdance moves. Okay, I can handle that. I should, so we can say, join Shamar and the other revelers, or breakdance with Maxwell. Um... We are not in breakdance gear, y'all, and we're a little white for that. So I should join Shamar and the other revelers. Walking down the stairs, you, li you link up with Shamar, Drake, and Hannah. <sighs> it's been less than two minutes and my ears hurt. Come on, Drake. You usually give it at least five minutes before tapping out. There's so much happening. Oh, that's the problem. Drake, stop being relatable, damn you. Bring out the horses! Whoa, what? Why are we bringing out the horses? The horses! What? No, no, no. What are we doing? No. The horses? You're bringing horses in here? Someone on staff leads out a pair of beautiful steeds. Oh my god, stop with the faces! No! No! God. Who's ready for a little horse riding? In the fucking hall. Okay. Sure. I am. Great. Maxwell mounts one of the horses. Who will be my partner? How about our king to be? I nominate Drake as my proxy. Aha. Oh no, you're not forcing me into the saddle tonight. Oh, aren't we though? Aren't we though, Drake? Yeah, the, the saddle. The sa- okay. Alright. I vote for Kira! Yeah, Kira! Come on up then, Lady Kira. Your saddle awaits. We get the bad ending and trampled to death by horses. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I have my own horse, thank you very much. <laughs> Winkle size. <laughs> One that made the trip with me from the palace. Because we knew this was coming? One of the house staff leads out a third horse. Stop, stop with the face. It, it yeah. <laughs> Eyebrows do, yeah. <laughs> you mount Kanna. Hey girl, I missed you. Stop with the face. It, horse sound. You ride around the room with Maxwell, waving to partygoers. My fellow Cordonians, so we can say you will all kneel before me, take a picture, or today I ride for Cordonia. That's, today I ride for Cordonia. 
<laughs> for Cordonia! Don't make me say uh, For Cordonia! Woo! Riding a horse! Yay! Shut up, Drake. Maxwell nudges you. We should let some others ride around on the horses. Don't worry, nobody else will ride Kanna. She's yours. You're goddamn right. You don't just let random people get on a uh, X race horse. Okay? Okay. And it's just the face. I can't. Fair enough. You dismount and return to the party. You feel a gentle tap on your shoulder. Kira, I'm glad I caught you. Always happy to be caught? Is something on your mind? We'll be traveling back to the capital within the week, and the coronation will be held soon after. We won't get as much time to see one another, so I wanted to do something special for us. Well, for you. Oh, do you now? Like what? Uh, my plan is a relaxing massage in the spa room, along with candles, a jet tub, and me. Which he's saying in the middle of a party, mind you, where anybody could be listening in. That's gutsy. Uh, there's a spa room? You... okay, sure. Clearly you haven't had any downtime since you've arrived. It's on the third floor. I was hoping you could join... A shamar, there you are. Don't forget that you promised me a drink. Yeah, if you think she wasn't listening. Shamar smiles apologetically. Uh, Lady Kira, if you'll excuse me. He kisses you on the cheek and whispers. If you can, meet me later. We'll see if I can get away. He nods and departs with Olivia. The party rages into the night. Oh boy. Oh, now now we're now we're up to the the saucy music again. Later. Fragments of split apples litter the floor. Oh, that's right. He's he said he said two apple things, didn't he? Take drinks. All right. The bust of Maxwell's great-grandfather is riddled with cracks and chips. An arrow protrudes from his eye while the apple on his head remains unscathed. Okay. Kiara lies in the corner of the room. Penelope drapes her arms around a horse. Aww. Too... Too much. Alright, let's see if I can read this. Je ne me sens pas bien. Going with that. You know, horse... You and I have so much in common. Hair, bodies, an adoration of poodles. You're like my equine soulmate, Penelope. Ah, stop with the face. Freaking horse faces. Crazy. Bertrand sits against a column, a sword in one hand and an empty bottle of champagne in the other. Ooh. We gave those apples what for? Uh, gave him something anyway. In the middle of the carnage, Maxwell continues to dance. Break it down, nice and slow. You're still going? Hey, if I stop, the party stops. It's like that Louis the Fourteenth quote, I am the party. Yeah, I think horse league marriage is illegal in Cordonia. I, yeah, I would hope so? I would hope that we we haven't legalized horse marriage before, like, gay marriage. So, ho hopefully. Hopefully. How are you feeling? I hope it wasn't too hard on you. I feel, so we can say, invincible, so-so, or like someone smashed a bottle over my head. Um, yeah, as doesn't really matter what we say here, so I feel so-so. A party that rocks you to your core can also also drains you to your core. Truer words have rarely been spoken. It's over. I'm finally free. Shut up, Drake. 
What do you mean it's over? The party's just getting started. Uh, Lady Penelope is literally talking to a horse. The party has done its job. The party needs to retire. Your mane is so soft. You have to tell me who does your hair. So Penelope, that's called a humectant conditioner. And I know this because that's what we used to use on our horses' manes and tails. And yeah, they were soft. Just like big, big bottle of suave humectant. Just drown the horse's mane and tail in that. And yeah, you will have a very, very soft horse. Mm -hmm. And again with the creepy horse face. Okay. Back home, this was always about the time we'd break out a game of truth or a game of truth or dare, but I bet you guys are too classy for that. You'd be betting wrong. I love truth or dare. Uh, truth or dare? That sounds dangerous. Well, only if you have something to hide, or a fear of embarrassing stunts, or real jackasses playing with you, because yeah, no, sometimes that can get dangerous. It sounds fun. I can't believe you've never played. Now we've got to do it. Oh, no. I'm not playing truth or dare. Yeah, because you're afraid someone will ask if you like us. But come on, Drake. We should do it for Hannah. Oh, I wouldn't want to pressure you guys into doing something on my behalf. But I would. Do it! Do it! I see where this is going. Drake! 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 Okay, fine, I'll play. Just stop chanting my name. Woohoo! Someone's going streaking tonight! Oh, for the love of God. We can play in my room. Oh, God. Oh, no. Drake, Maxwell, and Hannah head off. You gaze at the stairwell. Shamar said he'd be at the spa. Hannah, Drake, and Maxwell will be playing truth or dare. Hmm. Well, this is another one of those where you can do both. So, yeah, I'm... I'm gonna go with them first. Let's go play truth or dare first, and then we'll... Then we'll head off. A little while later, you, Hannah, Drake, and Maxwell have gathered in Hannah's room for truth or dare. This is so exciting. How do we start? Usually with a few drinks. Ooh, there's a full bar. What do you guys want? Make me something fruity and delicious. I know. I want sex on the beach. I'll bet you do, Maxwell. Oh my, I, I don't think, uh, it's a drink. Never mind, I'll make it myself. I'll just have, what do you think Drake wants? Let me guess, whiskey. I'm getting predictable, aren't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, you are, Mr. Denim Shirt. Maybe just a little bit. What about you, Kara? Oh, we got we got all kinds of choices. All right, so we've got <laughs> sex on the beach, mm, cherry soda, champagne, or whiskey. Huh. I mean, like if we have whiskey, we know who that endears us to. If we have sex on the beach, we know who that endears us to. So let's have a cherry soda. Let's just do that. Hannah pours the drinks and takes a glass of champagne for herself. Cheers, friends. Thank you for joining me tonight. Cheers. To friendship. To friendship and truth or dare. Oh boy, this is gonna be a long night. Drinks have been accomplished. Now, what comes next? Well, someone goes first. Roth should start. This was her idea. Okay, Kira. Truth or dare? I choose... How, do, how about water? Or, or does Cordonia have a secret hangover cure? I'm saying that's what the cherry soda is. Is a 
is a secret hangover cure. Um, I choose... I choose truth. Why not? I was hoping you'd say that. I've got a great one for you. If you are stranded on a deserted island where you'll never see anyone or any civilization ever again, which one of us would you want with you? Oh, I'd want Hannah. This isn't even a question. I'd want Hannah. <gasps> me? Wouldn't you get tired of me after a while? What? How can you say that? It's just... I'm not sarcastic like Drake or funny like Maxwell. And I haven't had any training for deserted island scenarios. Really? Nowhere in your vast repertoire of education did they tell you what you should do if you and your and your prince are stranded on a deserted island? Come on, Hannah. Your your parents have let you down. Hannah, I love talking to you. And it'd be fun, like a permanent slumber party. No one to tell us what to do or how to behave. We could do whatever we wanted. Yeah, uh-huh. Whatever we wanted. You know, there is something very appealing about that. I think we could make a pretty sweet life on our own. I could gather coconuts. I could weave us dresses out of palm fronds. Ooh, and we could live in a treehouse. I've always wanted to sleep in a treehouse. <laughs> so cute. This is sounding better and better. Sign me up. Okay, Maxwell, it's your turn. Truth or dare? Dealer's choice. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, really? All right. Okay, then we can have him tell us a secret that no one else knows about you. Or swing from the chandelier and do a backflip off it. No, Maxwell's gonna hurt himself if we have us do if we have him do that. So no, tell us a secret that no one else knows about you. Aw, I'm an open book. Everyone knows everything about me. Nope. Not true at all. We know almost nothing about you. <laughs> well, all anyone ever had to do was ask. Okay, let's see. I hate carousels. Oh, really? I thought everyone loved carousels. Jeez, Maxwell. When I was little, the royal court took all the kids to a theme park for the prince's birthday. But when we were on the carousel, some reporters got in and mobbed us. The security team did their best to get us all out of there, but I was the last one they got to. Oh my god, they had to send an extraction team just to get the kids. That's horrible. So I was stuck on this dumb carousel for what seemed like forever with people taking pictures and shouting questions at me. <laughs> Jerks. I was only three. I had no idea what was really going on. And because our parents had spent so much time trying to warn us about dangers, I thought I was about to get murdered. Yeah, well, when your brother is, you know, the Cordonia killer. Aw, Maxwell. Yeah, I'm fine. It was a long time ago. Still. Aw, oh, Jesus, this is why I don't like to talk about serious stuff. I'm fine, you guys. Just forget it. Next up, Hannah. Truth or dare? Uh, oh, um, truth. Tell us about your first kiss. Ooh. My first kiss? You have been kissed, right? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, but what if she hadn't, Maxwell? Jerk. Well, you were engaged after all. Well, it was actually a very chaste courtship. Our first kiss was in front of a professional photographer for our engagement photo shoot. This is a very truthful game of truth or, dare, truth or dare. There's not a lot of daring happening. My parents were insistent that we publish a very public announcement in all of the papers. It was somewhat awkward. He wasn't a great kisser. <laughs> he missed. <laughs> oh no! 
Missed? How? How do you miss? She's like six inches in front of you. He kissed my ear. Well, he punctured his lip on my earring, actually. Whoa, this is going to be a really saucy engagement photo, y'all. With, like, you know, go, going, for the, going for the ear action there. Okay. He started bleeding. <laughs> I felt terrible. My parents were furious that he ruined my dress. It was a complete disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think that was the kind of fluid transfer they were hoping for, no. Hannah, we can say, you deserved a better first kiss than that, or how about a do-over right now with me? Ooh. Ooh. Y'all, I, I can't. I can't, I'm sorry. I can hear Risa screaming at me from the future, but I can't. Ugh. You deserved a better first kiss than that. Thank you, Kira. But it wasn't so bad. I mean, like, I feel like we'd embarrass Hannah if we asked her to, like, kiss us in front of Maxwell and Drake. And Drake would do his, like, homophobic, <gasps> the girls are kissing thing. So, yeah. Looking back, it was actually pretty funny. I mean, who can miss that badly on a kiss? Yes, indeed. Who can miss that badly on a kiss? Ha! <laughs> I mean, I know. I mean, what a loser. Maxwell, were you her... Boyfriend or her uh, fiance? Uh, Maxwell? Okay, maybe I accidentally kissed someone's chin, but that's like a totally understandable mistake, right? I mean, it's right below the mouth. Yeah, that's actually way more understandable than the ear. <laughs> yes, that's completely normal. Okay, my turn again. Kira, I dare you to go streak through the ballroom in your underwear. What now? That's not fair. It's not her turn. Yeah, and she didn't even choose dare. Well, someone should streak tonight or this game is a bust. Come on now, Kira. It's your game. Who will it be? Who should who should streak? Hannah or Drake? Yo, Drake. Drake, my boy. Take your clothes off. You make your way to the now empty ballroom. Yep, he's got his shirt off and probably a lot else, so take a drink. Maxwell did say in his underwear, so um, yeah, presumably he's got underwear on. The things I do for you people. He's so like, he's walked through the palace like this? Drake takes a deep breath and sprints through the room. Yeah, if you think we're not, we don't have this on our phones, dude. Woo! Go Drake! Drake sprints back and stops in front of the three of you. <sighs> Satisfied. Yes, now put your shirt back on, boy. Yep. Now what? I'm going to, we can say, join in. Hi, Kaferl. Welcome, welcome to the stream. So we can say, I'm going to jump in or get out of here before anyone catches us. No, get out of here before anyone catches us. We're not, we're not joining in. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. Yeah, I know. Every everybody leave your clothes on, please. Good lord. Y'all race back to Hannah's room and collapse on the bed, laughing and panting. So, okay, so he walked through the whole damn place like this, so it's supposed to be, like, shocking that he ran through the ballroom? This, hmm, this doesn't compute for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of this nonsense. Give me my clothes back. Yeah, <laughs> you earned them. Drake pulls on his clothes. This was so much fun tonight. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah, you know me. I don't need much of an ex ex much of an excuse to party. And I'm still not sure why I came this time, but I guess I'd do it again. You came because you like us. Drake, I think we're graduating from friends to best friends. You're going to give him an aneurysm or something with that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't know, man. We all drink together, goof off together, spend most of our time together. 
No. Hannah hugs Drake's arm. It's too late, Drake. We are best friends. <sighs> I guess I'm just gonna have to accept this, huh? Yup. It's probably for the best. You could do much worse than the three of us. Yeah, like literally anyone else in Cordonia because they're all assholes. Oh my god. Well, that's true, isn't it? Drake sighs. Okay, you got me. Yay! Yay! Please tell me this isn't a thing we do now. Stop fucking being relatable, Drake. Drake, we can either say yay or this is not a thing. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna drive him nuts. Drake, yay! I'm surrounded. Yep. Give up now. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. But in a good way, right? I said what I said. <laughs> Hannah stifles a massive yawn. Okay, we should probably call it a night before we break Hannah. You stand up and make your goodbyes. Good night. This has been a very memorable evening. Good night, guys. So we played truth or dare with our friends. Yay. Good night. All right. In the hallway outside Hannah's room, you wave goodbye to your friends, smiling. You gaze at the stairwell. Shamar said he'd be at the spa. Hmm. So yeah, we're, we're gonna join Shamar in the spa. You wander up to the third floor landing, searching for the spa room. Shamar? I should have asked for specific instructions. You walk past a door when someone catches you in their arms. Oh god, the last time this happened, it wasn't good. Kira. Oh, thank god. Okay. Alright, cool. Warn a girl. Shamar! I'm doing that thing again, yay. I hope I didn't surprise you. I came out to find you since I wasn't sure if you knew where to go. Yeah, I did not know where to go. You snuggle into his embrace. I'm not really complaining, but maybe we should get out of the hall. <laughs> yeah, because the last time, um, yeah. This way. He takes your hand and leads you through a door a short distance away. And into a tranquil, quiet spa room where candles flicker softly and sweet music plays. Oh, how nice. Wow. I had no idea what this was here. If only I'd asked Maxwell to be more thorough on the house tour. How does Maxwell forget to show you this? This is beautiful, Shamar. You keep doing all these nice things for me. Yeah, and that's why you're better than Drake. Drake's just an asshole, 2018. You deserve them. Hmm. So we can say, I do, don't I, or, and you deserve a kiss. Kissing is an option, so take a drink. Did we drink for Hannah's kiss? I don't remember. Let's... I forget. You want to drink again? All right. So there's a prince in need of some kissing, so we kiss him. And you deserve a kiss. You loop your arms around his neck and kiss him deeply. Aw, we got ourselves romance point. Kira, you have no idea how badly I've been wanting to do that the entire night. Seeing you across the table, but not being able to touch you, to hold you. I don't know how I'll ever let you go. Oh, you're, you're in deep, Shamar. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't. But then how would we make it into the hot tub? Well, I mean, you can do that without letting go, but your clothes are going to get all wet. You should relax in the hot water for a few minutes before a massage. Mmm. He takes your hand and leads you over to a steaming tub scented with fragrant jasmine flowers. Ooh. Shamar starts to unbutton his blazer. <laughs> I should offer to help or watch. Um... 
Uh, I hmm. See, because I kind of feel like offering to help might push boundaries in a way that's not okay. But, you know, also by the game's rules, that's the only thing that's romantic, is, you know, pushing people's boundaries in a way that might not be okay. Uh, I'll, I'll watch. He notices you staring as he sheds his blazer. Something you like? Let's just say I like what I'm seeing. Grinning, he slowly strips off his shirt, taking the bottom hem and twirling it over his head. You laugh. All right, all right, let's get into the tub. He climbs into the tub. You peel off your clothes and slip into the tub with him. You sigh, submerging yourself into the steaming water. Shamar wraps his arms around you. Ah, this was a phenomenal idea. By the way, your best friend streaked through the, the ballroom earlier tonight in his underwear. <laughs> is, this, is this not an important, inappropriate time to bring that up? Yeah, I thought it'd be nice to experience some calm before the storm. The storm? Is the coronation going to be that crazy? Preparations for it will be hectic, to say the least. There will be tasks to coordinate, speeches to write, people to meet. Sounds like you're the one who could use the massage. So much entendre. I'm not going to lie. I could use one. But I wanted tonight to be about you. Aw, you sweet. Tonight can be about both of us. How many more moments are we going to have like this? I want to make the most of it. Ooh, the most of it, huh? Yeah? Besides, I give a pretty excellent massage. Another one of your many talents? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, it is. Along with my secret talent of plate spinning, eating really spicy food, or being an amazing lover. Uh, that seems inappropriate. Okay, plate spinning or eating really spicy food. Um, eating really spicy food. Why not? I don't know. Impressive. It's like I have no taste buds for heat. Maybe I'll demonstrate sometime if you're lucky. Now about that massage. You slip behind Shamar, so this tub has some has more room than I thought it did. And start kneading his shoulders and neck, smirkling them like a cat. Wow, it's like trying to soften rocks back here. Uh, perhaps I have been carrying around a lot lately. It's probably the crown. Literally, how much does yours weigh? I saw a photo of your dad wearing his and it looks heavy. It is heavy. That's on purpose. You're supposed to feel the weight of your responsibility. Actually, it's just because it's made out of metal, and metal is heavy. Wow, good thing I offered to help you out. You would have fallen over at the coronation if you've gotten any tenser. The prince laughs. You always have a unique way of looking at the world. Eh, yeah, I think everybody does. That's me, unique. After a time, the prince relaxes under your hands as you run your, ba your palms down his back. You let your fingers trail over his bare skin. Uh-huh. Okay. You're quite good at this. Hmm. I'm glad I could help. Now, let me return the favor. Oh boy. Oh boy, y'all. He stands and draws you up, handing you a towel. After you've both dried off, off, he leads you over to a massage table. Here, lay down and relax. His bare skin and his bare skin. Yeah, mm-hmm. This bed is so soft. You lay face down as he rubs his hands with a sweet-smelling massage oil and runs a firm hand down your body. Ooh. 
Mmm. His hands move over you, massaging the knots from your legs, your arms. Whoa. Where, where else? Oh, wow. That feels great. What do you want to bet he looked this up, too, like he did our first date? Finally, he returns to your back, brushing your hair out of the way. You feel your skin tingle where his fingers run down the length of your spine. I should sit up and kiss him, or just relax and enjoy the rest of the massage. Alright, kissing's an option. Take a drink. Yep, G give, give that prince a kiss. You suddenly sit up and reach for Shamar, pulling him into a deep kiss. Because of course we do. Yep, there's our romance point. He's all shocked. Kira. Hopefully he's... Okay. See, again, we probably should have asked before we just grabbed him and kissed him, but whatever. Then he sinks into the kiss, his hands warming your skin as they wrap around you and wander down your back. Yeah, by the way, we're probably freezing now because we just got out of this, like, warm hot tub and just laid out across a table. Yeah, I'm probably pretty cold. Hmm, Shamar. Oh, his mouth moves down your neck, gently biting. Oh, I'm getting, getting a little nibbly there, huh? This has been on my mind all day. Having you here with me. Yeah? <laughs> you really restrained yourself. I try, but it's proving more and more difficult. Yeah, I know, you've progressed to nibbling me now. Yeah, Kira Shamar. Kira Shamar. <laughs> Should be a song. He groans as you slide your legs off the table, one on each side of him. His arms tighten around your waist, pressing even closer. Ooh. Nothing's holding you back now. Yeah, except it's like two in the morning. He kisses you, long, deep, wanting, and you respond, arching into him. Then he steps away from you, breathing hard. It's not the end of the book yet. That's not entirely true. Even though I want you, Kira, we shouldn't. Yeah, shouldn't, but... Shamar, we can say, why don't we go further, or I'm okay keeping it light. Um, nothing sexier than lukewarm pool water, yeah. Um, here's the thing. He's saying stop. So, you don't, you don't keep pushing past the no, because consent is important. So no, Shamar, I'm okay keeping it light. Respect to the no. We don't have to push it farther than this. It'll happen when we're ready. Soon there won't be anything in the way. No lingering questions. No other women to worry about. Whoa, this is sounding kind of, kind of final here. And then... Ooh, the plans I have for us, Lady Kira. Whoa. Ooh. Okay. I'm holding you to that. He holds you against him, pressing a kiss into your hair. Daw. Okay. Alright, yes. Anytime your partner is like, we're stopping now, you don't just go, Aw, oh, why don't we just keep going? No, 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 no. Stop, you respect the no. Sometime later, during which, I don't know, I guess we finished our massage? It's getting late. We should get you back to your room. Hmm, okay. <laughs> You're going to have to carry me at this point. I'm probably exhausted. You yawn and get to your feet, pulling your clothes on. Shamar wraps an arm around you, leading you out. God, the sun's probably coming up, y'all. Come along now. Come along now, I'm not a dog. The prince walks you to your room. Thanks for the evening. Yeah, nobody's gonna notice this. I feel like you did the better job massaging than I did. Well, he had, like, massage oil and a table, and you were just trying to sit behind him in a tub, so, you know. If you weren't a prince, I could see a very lucrative career as a masseuse. He would be very popular. 
<laughs> he smiles. What is it? I'm just happy to know that you enjoyed yourself this evening. I did. Shamar looks at you, staring into your eyes. I'm not sure when we'll get a moment like this again. I'll make sure to hold on to it then. I should kiss him again or hug him, alright. Take a drink. And smooch him. Kiss him again. You kiss him, feeling the beat of his heart as he holds you close. I have never been able to feel that. I don't, maybe, maybe that's a me thing, but, like, if I'm up against somebody, like, they've got to be going a mile a minute before I'll feel anything, so. Hmm. Shamar runs his fingers through, the, through your hair, deepening the kiss, and then reluctantly pulls away. We dirty little romance point. Good night, Kira. So we spent our night relaxing at the spa. This is a very long night. Maybe we've got a time turner. I don't know. Good night, Shamar. Whew, what a night. Guess it's time to turn in. The next morning, you wake up and glance at the clock, noticing it's nearly noon. <laughs> Shamar. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Probably. Alright, so, I mean, we probably got to bed at like 6 in the morning, so I don't know why we're surprised. I- what? I must have slept in. You dart out of bed and out, at, out into the hall. Descending the stairwell, you see a few members of the house staff, plus Bertrand and Maxwell, cleaning up last night's mess. Hey, why'd nobody come get me? Hmm, <laughs> you earned a day to sleep in. Wow, did I? Whoa. I did? We also thought it'd be better if we minimized the destruction from last night before you woke up. Why would you be worried about me? I could have helped you guys. You know that, right? We don't want you wasting your energy when we're heading into one of the most important events of our lives. The coronation ball is next, and after last night, all eyes are going to be on you. Oh, great. Just what I need. Pressure. So get what sleep you can. It's not long before we depart for the palace. Oh, boy. Okay. The coronation ball has finally arrived. Will it be the fairy tale you've imagined? Find out in the next chapter. Okay, so... That is where we're going to leave it for the week, actually. There will be no stream, no live stream on Friday. Um, because as I said earlier, I have somewhere else to be at the time that I'm supposed to be streaming. So um, we also are three chapters away from finishing the book. So one of these streams is going to be a shorter stream that's just one chapter. Um, and that may be next Monday. But yeah. Join me back here on Monday, same time, same place, here on twitch.tv slash aromanticace at 7 p.m. Pacific. And until next week, my lovely viewers, catch you later.